uh, Jimi Hendrix experience. Yeah. When did you start playing? Well, I started at 12. Who was your greatest influence at that well, time? Well, I think when I first started, it was probably the Vetchers. You know, and then I would watch, I, I was in a band, and I was the worst guitarist in the band, and I was in another band, I was terrible. I was the guy that would tell not to make chords, because I didn't know how to make them, except an E chord, and somebody showed me a D. And I could play solos, though, so they would tell me, like, why don't you just play little lines, you know? And, um, and when you get to, like, the hard parts of the chord, just don't play, you know, just turn your guitar knob down. And, uh... Yeah, it was just, for well, the first few years, was, I was terrible. And um, then I got in a band called uh, The Yards. We had a little, a little calling card, it was called Music for the Insane. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and we had a psychedelic basement with Dayglow paint, you know, and I painted all this wild stuff on Dayglow. And we had happenings and stuff, you know. And, um, so you do a lot of painting in your own um, album covers, so... I started as a painter when I was a little kid. I was like three or four. I was always banging, putting banging blocks together and making sketches. You know, drawing dinosaurs and horses and airplanes. And every airplanes, yeah. And um, my parents wanted me to go to art school, but by the time I got out of school, I was already like in band. So, and then I started. I guess after I left the Yards, I I started going out to Chicago, and you know, there was all that influence. Magic Sam was such a, a huge influence. But before that, it was mostly country guys. Like the Porter Wagner show was really popular. We'd all watch that before we would practice it with the Yards. And we used to watch Buck Owens. Um, and Buck Owens had, you know, always had a great band. And I remember I got a cheap Telecaster, and I wanted it to look like Buck Owens' telly, which was red with white binding around it like that. And mine didn't have that. <laughs> so I painted it with paint house paint. And I took like, <laughs> it work. yeah, and I took to make binding, I took, you know, masking tape like this around it and then spray painted white paint on, on here and here. So it would look like Buck's red telly. Aww. And, um, uh, and anyway, awesome. and Porter Wagner had Thomas Carlisle who played like this. He was incredible. He, you know, he played all his stuff like, uh, flat. Bobby, were you into uh, Jimmy Bryant or Speedy West? Those well, you know, if I was, I probably didn't know who they were because, you know, I was pretty young and I didn't... They were Tennessee Ernie Ford guys. Well, I probably so, was because, I mean, when I when I was a kid, but they never listed guys on records back then. Yeah. They didn't put personnel on them. Um, the guys that I really... Like Don, Don Rich. Don Rich. Don Rich was a huge yeah. influence. You know, and then, of course, the James Burton because I remember him being on Ricky Nelson, so... Everybody wanted to be like James Burton. I met James Burton a few years ago. Yeah, and, I did too. And he, I came up and I said, I'm a big fan of it. And he said to me, and I'm like, and he goes, do you know who I am? Like, he was surprised that someone would know who he was. He was, was like that when I talked to him. He's, He's a like, real humble. I'm like, yes, yeah. of course I know who you are. I picked his brand. He came to New York a couple of years ago and I said, were you on the all, or how much of the Merle Haggard yeah, stuff were you on? Yeah. He said, I'm on all, pretty much all the early stuff. Right. And he said, Roy Nichols came in. Uh, I think on the third or fourth album, but all the early stuff, like the girl, the girl turned right. Was, right was Burton. Yeah, did all that. it's all James Burton. All that really cool, wild stuff is yeah. Burton. Yeah. Some of that stuff is insane, and that, really it, and we all love that because he had that speed. Yeah. And then Cropper was also a big influence. We all loved Cropper because we all went out and put shims underneath our our tellies and strats because. He kept really low action with light strings, and he played through like a champ, I think, or, or some kind of tiny Fender. And, like a um, Princeton or a champ or something small. Well, a really little, a Harbor. That's what oh, it's a Harbor. He played yeah. through a Harbor. And so that was always, you know, somebody we loved. And, and of course the Rockers. We loved the Doors, um, Muddy, you know. And by that point, we were all, the Arbs was just like half blues and half rock, and we, we wrote our own stuff. We had really weird song titles like City Nozzle. Chris Pestalozzi was technically, I mean, he really was the band leader and, you know, he was a really good songwriter. Were, were you influenced by like Hank Marvin and the Shadows, those guys? No, nah, not at that point. Because you more, think, more Ventures? Man, more Ventures. ventures yeah, cause... Noki Edwards and, you know, all those guys. That's great, yeah. Yeah. And, um, but then when I got a hold of blues, that's when I really went nuts because I could, I could understand it better. Like, I could barely play Walk Don't Run very well. 
I couldn't really play a lot of their other songs. 